Thank you for watching THV 11 News at noon on this Monday. I'm Michael Lahren. Meteorologist Nathan Scott is over in the Weather Center keeping a close eye on the chance for winter weather this week. Nathan, it could cause a lot of problems for parts of Arkansas, huh? Good afternoon, Michael. It's beautiful out there today. We've got temperatures warming up to the 60s, but already winter storm watches have been posted for parts of Arkansas for Benton County and Carroll County. I expect more winter storm watches to be posted later today, primarily for North Arkansas. Here's what we're looking at right now. When we talk about winter weather potential, it is a good bet expected in North Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas in the pink area, say from just to the north of Little Rock and to the north, we will likely have a period of winter weather, maybe starting as early as Wednesday night, but certainly into our Thursday. That's when we'll have to stay weather aware. And right now I'm saying it's possible from Little Rock down to the south in the blue. There's still a lot of uncertainty in uh, determining what the temperatures will be because the difference between 33 and 32 degrees makes a huge difference in who will see what. And we're going to try to pinpoint more of those details going down the next couple days radar loop. It's all quiet right now, but one note of interest. There was an earthquake out into north central Oklahoma around 1110 this morning. It was a light earthquake magnitude 4.5. They felt shaking as far east as northwest Arkansas. Look at these temperatures right now. Upper 50s to lower 60s. I'll have more on the potential of winter weather coming up a little bit later. Little Rock police are wrapping up a news conference addressing violence in the city this weekend. In all, 10 people were shot Friday and Saturday in four separate incidents. Police say that they're concerned about the safety of citizens and officers and they plan to address it. Let's walk you through the shootings that happened over the weekend. The first one uh, at about 730 Friday night at University and 630 near the overpass there. Police tell us three people were shot. One of those victims died. The others are expected to recover. Now to the second police responded to that one on West 24th Street near the intersection with Lewis on Friday night. This is video from the next morning. One person went to the hospital there and they are expected to recover. The third shooting happened early Saturday morning. Three juveniles and a 23 year old man were hit and got themselves to the hospital, according to a police report. Officers say they offered conflicting information, but all said the shooting happened on South University near Asher. All four are expected to survive. And as for that fourth incident, Little Rock police say they got the call to Asher Avenue and 29th Street at about seven o'clock Saturday night. A woman and a small child, a one year old, were shot at a food truck there, the police chief says. They are expected to survive, but uh, the chief act just expressing frustration about that one in particular, that it's such a small child was hit, and just frustration about all of these shootings. Take a listen. Uh, it's very sad when you have someone uh, who doesn't have any, doesn't care about the safety of our community, and you have a one-year-old and a person who's holding the one-year-old that were at a food truck, and they are shot. You have a one-year-old baby that's shot. And if that in itself doesn't, doesn't upset you, it should. And Police Chief Keith Humphrey there went on to say the department is looking to file federal charges against those responsible for this weekend's shootings. There's another member of the command staff who uh, talked about some of uh, their plans to address this. We will have much more from that news conference coming up on THV 11 News at 5 and 6 o'clock. State police and fire marshals are still trying to figure out what started a house fire near Hot Springs that killed four people, including two kids. Officials say that fire happened Friday morning at the home just northeast of the city. Firefighters found the bodies of 31 year old Kenneth Ingram, 29 year old Kayla Ariaga and her two children it took crews from three fire departments to get the fire out. We're starting the week with promising signs in the fight against COVID-19. The Omicron surge seems to be stabilizing nationwide. New infections and hospitalizations are down they're, they're Excuse me, they're now dropping, so they are down across the country. And there's some welcome optimism on the new variants front. The former FDA commissioner says it appears that vaccines could fight the stealth subvariant BA2. There's data out of the UK that suggests that a fully boosted person may be more protected against this new variant than they were against the original strain of Omicron. 
and it is clear the nation and some of its leaders are eager for, eager for normalcy. Uh, Governor Asa Hutchinson said on Meet the Press yesterday, it's time for a new mindset regarding the pandemic. We also wanna make sure that you know that you can get more free COVID-19 test kits delivered straight to your house for free. We first told you on Friday that Arkansas is among six states that launched Project ACT, which stands for Access COVID Tests. If you'd like to get these free tests, just text the word TEST, T-E-S-T, -E to 501-376-1111. Again, that keyword is TEST. We will reply with the direct link to register along with information on free N95 respirator masks. As COVID-19 cases decline in some parts of the country, the CDC says it continues to monitor variants circulating here in the U.S. and internationally. That includes a new sub-variant of Omicron. We mentioned this a second ago, BA2. Naomi Ruckham has more on what we know so far. The new sub-variant of Omicron is known as BA.2. Preliminary research from Denmark shows it appears to be more infectious than the original BA.1. Dr. David Agus is a CBS News medical contributor. What we're seeing is, is that countries like Denmark, which are weeks ahead of the United States in dealing with Omicron as a whole, you're seeing a significant rise in BA.2. BA.2 has been detected in dozens of countries and several U.S. states, including Texas and California. The data are still very early, but it may not produce quite a severe disease. BA.2 has not been designated a variant of concern by the World Health Organization, like the original Omicron variant that began spreading before the holidays or the Delta variant that drove summer and fall surges. We would be concerned about a variant. One, it's even more contagious than the ones we have. Number two, it's capable of producing more severe disease. And number three, could it evade the protection of our current vaccines and the natural immunity some people have gotten? While there is more to learn about BA.2, public health experts emphasize getting vaccinated is critical to protect against severe disease. Dr. Agus says he expects the U.S. will be in a better situation with the virus by spring. This new variant will slow the decline in that curve, but if you've been exposed to BA.1, the first Omicron, if you will, um, that you will have immunity, hopefully that will cross over to BA.2. Doctors say continuing to wear masks and social distancing are important precautions for reducing the spread. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. That preliminary study also found that people who were fully vaccinated or had received boosters were less likely to get infected. The United Nations Security Council is meeting today to discuss the threat against Ukraine. Thousands of citizens there are joining local defense units in preparation for a possible Russian invasion. Ukrainians are determined to defend their homeland, but they're massively outgunned and outnumbered by their colossal neighbor. Moscow maintains it has no plans to invade, but that doesn't explain the roughly 100,000 Russian troops on Ukraine's border. Back in the forest, they're keeping up their fitness and practicing for urban warfare. Okay, it makes me angry, but it's not like, ah, what am I going to do? It's, it makes me angry, like, to prepare myself, you know. The U.S. says a Russian invasion of Ukraine would be horrific, but there's still time for President Putin to choose a different course. Tensions rose along the Pacific Rim this weekend when North Korea launched a missile capable of hitting U.S. military bases in the region. Skylar Henry has the latest on this from the White House. North Korea released still photos of Sunday's launch of an intermediate-range ballistic missile from a mobile vehicle near the Chinese border, as well as pictures it says were taken in space from a camera on the missile. The missile flew to an altitude of more than 1,200 miles before coming back down off North Korea's east coast. The Wasong-12 has a range of up to 2,800 miles, making it capable of hitting U.S. military bases in Guam and Okinawa, Japan. We are in close coordination and consultation with our allies and partners. That just, that's not just South Korea, but Japan as well, uh, about the threats that the burgeoning b ballistic missile program uh, by Kim Jong-un continues to present. Japan's cabinet secretary, Hirokazu Matsuno, <laughs> said the missile launch threatens the peace and security of the country, the region, and the international community. The Biden administration says it remains committed to making sure North Korea does not become a nuclear nation and says it's willing to hold talks with the North over its ballistic missile and nuclear programs. 
We remain committed to a denuclearized Korean peninsula. We remain committed to diplomatic talks. We've told Pyongyang we're willing to sit down without precondition to have those kinds of dialogues. Uh, but obviously, uh, Kim Jong-un wants to go a, a different way. So we have to make sure that we're ready militarily on the peninsula and in the region. This is the seventh North Korean launch of short or intermediate missiles this month, leading to some fears it's a precursor to North Korea's resuming tests of nuclear weapons or intercontinental ballistic missiles. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. This weekend's missile launch was the first time North Korea has fired an intermediate range missile since it announced in 2017 that it would halt all nuclear and ICBM testing.